Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. So today's topic is nutrition and we're going to discuss micronutrients. So I was talking with a client recently, and this is a new client, and we've been working on nutrition and training, kind of overall aesthetic goals. They want to lose fat, build muscle, be strong, look good in clothes and look good without clothes, so all the goals. And we covered nutrition, and one of the questions they asked was why I didn't recommend more supplements. So they had worked with trainers in the past who would give them like a list of supplements they were supposed to go out and buy, or they would sell to the client. Of course, the trainers would do that to make their own money. But they said that they had a trainer in the past. One of the lists was over 10 items they were supposed to be following. Another list was like six or eight, something like that. And they wondered why I recommended basically zero. <laughs> and we talked about it, and I thought it would make it maybe a good podcast. Is It's almost an underwhelming answer. Uh, and that's why I've hesitated to make multiple podcasts before, because it's not it's not that significant of an answer. And I, I probably should not have said that at only 1 minute and 20 seconds into the podcast, because what in the world is your motivation to continue listening? <laughs> but um, there would be good... Uh, in point to listening, good benefit yet, because we're going to discuss how do you address kind of the baseline needs for most people, and then kind of like some special case scenario type things. So you might fall under the special case scenarios, so that'll be worth listening to, and then also we all want to know what our baseline of requirement is. So for most people, like I have a master's in nutrition, and when I went through uh, my graduate program, we had to do a lot of research on this. We had to read research articles, multiples uh, on the same subject, so we wouldn't just, um, you know, accidentally find one that said one thing, but the majority of the, the information on that topic might say another. So you can always find a study that proves something, but if you look at, say, 10 studies, and only one says, you know, the opposite of the other nine, the, the nine are probably the truth, and the one, there's probably some other circumstances involved. So, for example, we used to look at who was the provider for the funding of the research. So if a supplement company funded the research, they're probably more likely to find that the supplement is necessary, if that makes sense. Now... There are things in place when you do research studies to prevent stuff like that. However, there's always human bias, so you never really know. So it's a good idea just to kind of look at that and double check that. So we went through how to like read research articles, how to analyze mistakes that might be made in them, and then understanding that we have to read multiple research articles on a singular subject before we can have like a really educated opinion. So just because you read one article doesn't mean shit. Um, so don't listen to anybody who says they read a article and they only have an article to, uh, to refer to. They're not going to be uh, the greatest resource for that unless the topic has not been written about. So sometimes we'll discuss things like my, me and other trainers. We might discuss things that we see in training, for example, that such and such results in such and such. But there is no research done on it. So there isn't always research available. You just kind of have to go with what you see with clients and in the gym. And then at that time, it's best to talk to somebody who's been in the industry a long time, had a lot of clients, a large variety of clients. And again, you're still going on basically their kind of guesstimation, and you would still have to prove it true for yourself. However, for a lot of things in the nutrition world, there is tons of research. So how to cover the baseline needs for most people in regards to micronutrients, which is our vitamins and minerals. You know, vitamin A, B, C, you go through the whatever, you know, the alphabet, <laughs> and all the minerals involved. Uh, most people, with their normal dietary habits, and then they add in a good multivitamin, meaning like a multivitamin that's broad-based. So you're not just going to add like a vitamin B complex, because it only has vitamin B, obviously. But you want to add a multivitamin that has like overall needs. So a men's multivitamin for men, a women's multivitamin for women. So one of my favorite companies is the company Now, N-O-W. 
and I believe the company is from Canada, and they have really good products, really good uh, standards, and everybody I've ever given their products to, because they make other things than just multivitamins, everybody's been happy, everybody enjoys it, so that tends to be a very good company, and we'll, they have an Adam and Eve uh, as their men and women's uh, multivitamin, so I use those all the time for recommending to clients, we also go through and recommend like their vitamin D3, which is very helpful for like hormones and overall mood and things like that, but for most people, their regular diet plus a multivitamin covers the baselines of their needs. So that's going to cover what everyone needs that you could, could predict when you're looking at a mass population. And what I mean by this is that anything beyond a regular multivitamin is most of the time going to be conditional, meaning not everybody would need that. So therefore, you don't need to kind of recommend it to everyone. So my job when I make podcasts like this is to talk to the mass population because I don't know exactly who is listening. So I don't know if it's all 42-year-old males who like powerlifting, you know, and I don't know if it's all, you know, 33-year-old, you know, stay-at-home moms who are just trying to lose some baby fat and kind of reclaim uh, their body as their own after pregnancy. So there's going to be a large variety of people listening. Therefore, I try to give it best advice based on the large variety. And that does mean that I don't hit individual needs on certain topics. For example, what kind of supplements you need to cover your baseline needs. We know that a multivitamin plus regular diet works. However, we do know other things such as like vitamin D3. Uh, it is involved with hormone production, it helps with overall mood, fights kind of depression. It's a great supplement, and the last time I read the research on it, which would be uh, admittedly two or three years ago, 88% uh, of Americans were shown to be deficient in vitamin D3. Well, that's a pretty large population, so that we can cover, we can assume that 88% is going to apply for most of the listeners here. So you could extrapolate, and there's pros and cons to it, that about 88% of the listeners would need some vitamin D3. And this makes sense because we get vitamin D from the sun, and if we're not outside a lot due to, you know, computer jobs and especially stay-at-home uh, <laughs> orders and stuff like that with the quarantine, is we might not be getting as much sun exposure. So vitamin D3 is a great supplement. I, I tend to recommend 5,000 I use a day because studies show that most people are extremely deficient, not only just mildly deficient. Uh, so you can do 5,000 I use a day. So for example, in like hospitals and stuff, when they want to get somebody um, really caught up, they'll give them, you know, 50,000 I use or more and modifications of that depending on the needs and blah, blah, blah. But it's not such a high dose of 5,000 I use that you'd be in any issue of having too much. But they also do make 3,000 and 1,000. But you can definitely supplement with vitamin D3. That is a good one. So I myself take a multivitamin, a vitamin D3 supplement, and I do take digestive enzymes for my larger meals. So if I've been kind of behind in food throughout the day and I have kind of eat a big meal before I go to bed, I tend to eat digestive enzymes with that meal just to help my body process that. So those are the things I take, and um, I believe they're absolutely useful. So digestive enzymes help break down larger meals. So that way it's not just sitting in your gut, and it kind of like messes up your digestive health, kind of gives you gas or bloating, or you know you have to go to the bathroom uh, not very comfortably afterwards. And it makes sure that you get more of the nutrients from that meal, that the food just, just doesn't pass through you without a really good um digestive breakdown of that food. So those are common ones that most people will take. That is a good idea for people to take if they want. So if you believe yourself not to have a great amount of sun exposure, taking some vitamin D3 wouldn't hurt. And it's insanely cheap. It's less than 10 cents a day. So that's great to do. Digestive enzymes are great to have on hand for like taking big meals. Like before you take a big meal or eat a big meal, you take some digestive enzymes just to help with the discomfort of that meal. So if you ever have like a cheat meal or refeed, refeed meal, reward meal, whatever the hell people want to call them anymore. Um, but if you have a big meal on a diet, that does help. I know a lot of people take vitamin B complex as like um, kind of an afternoon energy boost or anytime they have like their lull of energy in the day. Rather than doing caffeine, which might mess with their sleep, or there's a bunch of people who have caffeine issues for a bunch of other reasons, like heart issues and other issues. Um, but if they want to avoid caffeine, taking a vitamin B complex is a good way to kind of boost some energy. A lot of people will take 
vitamin C for immune system health. So if they ever feel like they're slightly sick or not feeling like great energy, um, or kind of feeling worn down, if that makes sense. So they're stressed, they've been low on sleep, you know, maybe they're starting to get the sniffles, maybe they're coughing a little bit. So they'll take some vitamin D, vitamin C to kind of boost uh, their immune system at a time where they feel like they might be compromised. So those are really good supplements that are all like totally fine, not going to hurt you to take them even if you didn't really need them, okay? Now, some people will take fiber, and that makes sense if they have a diet that doesn't include a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables and a lot, it's just like meats and carbs. <laughs> fiber helps, again, again, with just overall digestion. So if you eat a meal and you kind of feel bloated in your belly or you feel sluggish with energy afterwards, sometimes fiber can help to fight that. You don't want to take an enormous amount of fiber out of nowhere. You'll be absolutely discomfort, uh, uncomfortable in your digestive system. So you want to kind of use fiber in small doses here and there and build your um, uh, kind of ability to handle that over time. Now in podcast 414, we do talk about improving digestion comfort. So you can check that out for more information if you have issues with bloatedness, gassy, or kind of like sluggish after meals. You can find more from information in that podcast, okay? Now, sometimes people ask me about fish oils to help with heart health in regards to like cholesterol. Sure, isn't going to hurt, I guess. You do want to reduce sugar intake. You want to reduce cholesterol from your food. You want to increase exercise, specifically resistance-based exercise. Those things will actually help a little bit more um, and maybe would be a good kind of conjunction with fish oils. If you just take fish oils and do nothing else different in your nutrition or training or exercise, that's not going to be really good, okay? That's not going to help a ton. So you do want to add in some exercise resistance training and you want to add in just kind of a reduction of cholesterol foods. So in podcast 345, we talk about dietary fats and cholesterol. So you learn more about how to control cholesterol uh, in that podcast. Some other things that come up that are really kind of like individual specific is um, a lot of females, if they lift weights, but they're kind of underfed in food or they do running as well as lifting weights, they'll tend to feel lightheaded or dizzy or short of breath during exercise. And maybe if they get up out of a chair, they kind of almost feel like they're going to pass out. And that could be because they're low in iron. So they can take an iron supplement. Now, you do want to take that in small doses and work your way up because it has uh, kind of complications associated with it. When you take too large of an amount at one time, you can get headaches and just kind of feel like, um, well, it can make you, it can back you up in terms of digestion. So there's other in, like um, aspects to it. So it's something you want to take in small doses and work your way up if you feel like you're deficient in that. Another thing is just celery seed extract is a really good supplement to help with water retention. So if somebody has high blood pressure and they kind of tend to be overweight, uh, they can take celery seed extract and that helps to kind of reduce water retention, which can lower their blood, blood pressure. So a lot of the things I just listed there, they're going to be individual specific, meaning not everyone has to take you know, celery seed extract. Not everyone has to take iron. Not everybody has to take fish oils. Not everybody has to take fiber. So there are... The things that everyone should do is regular diet, okay, with multivitamin, and I would throw in vitamin D3. I think those are really good resources to, to give your body. They're pretty cheap as well, so it's not going to break the bank, but it's going to influence your health in a positive way. And then like we said, from there, it's just kind of like what you feel like you need. You know, vitamin B, like we said, for energy boost. Vitamin C for immune system boost. Digestive enzymes to help with digestive health and digestive ease at meals. But you just kind of take it as you go. So I was telling somebody that, like, recently that nobody, like, if somebody doesn't know that they're lactose intolerant, they don't need, they don't know that they need something to help with, like, lactose breakdown until they get sick from lactose intolerance. So it's kind of like you almost have to do the baseline is a multivitamin and vitamin D3, and then you just have to see how your body handles things. If something comes up, you address it. But it's going to be impossible to know what everything might come up and have it all addressed beforehand. So that's typically what people want to know when they talk to multivitamin, I mean, when they talk about micronutrients, is what do I need to be my most healthy? And I don't really know that for any individual. We know that there's a baseline of most healthy, which is a multivitamin and vitamin D3. And then you can start throwing in extras here and there. But what extras depend on what person I'm talking to? Okay, their lifestyle, uh, their nutritional needs, their goals, all that stuff.
So hopefully this gives you kind of like a calming sense that you don't need to take 400 supplements a day. And in no way ever should a trainer give you a list of 10 plus supplements ever. Okay. So just do a multivitamin, throw in some vitamin D3. Those things are cheap. And then if you feel anything coming on, you would then maybe talk to a, tra uh, a nutritionist and say, hey, you know, in the energy, uh, my energy in the afternoon feels like crap, but if I take caffeine, I have trouble sleeping. They would then recommend something like a vitamin B complex. Or if you'd say, like, oh, I could keep on getting sick, like, every month or two, I get these sniffles and the cough, and it just won't ever go away. Well, you can take vitamin, B, vitamin C to help boost your immune system. So it's almost like you have to see how your body handles things. If there's a reoccurring thing coming up, you talk to a nutritionist on what that reoccurring thing is, and maybe they can help with what type of supplement would be helpful. Okay? So, there's some baseline information that I hope is helpful, but I thought it would be interesting for everyone to see that it isn't amazingly complicated on what you would need to do in order to control your baseline needs. You just need a daily multivitamin, and you want to follow that up with maybe some vitamin D3 if you feel like you're limited in sun exposure. And then from there, it's just individual needs. So if you have any questions or if you are uh, if you notice a behavior in your own body that you're wondering if there's uh, something you can do to help. So like we said, somebody with a lull in energy but they want to avoid caffeine. Somebody who wants an immune system boost. So if there's anything that you individually feel like you're an uncertain of, then shoot us an email at brutalironjim at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to help. If there's something I don't know, then I can connect you with the nutritionist that I know, uh, the people that can maybe get you the answer if I can't. But I do have a master's in nutrition. I've been helping people with nutritional supplements and all that stuff uh, for 18 years. I've worked with over 2,000 clients, so I have a pretty good um, background in this. But like I said, I'm very fortunate to know uh, people in my life who know even more than I do about this stuff. So if there's something I can't help you with, I, I will promise to get you the answer by going to one of them. Okay? So reach out if there's anything you need. Again, our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. So thank you for listening to this. And uh, just remember, if you feel the podcast is helpful, please share it with family and friends because the more people we help, the happier the world will be. Also, if you like this information, you can find more from us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Brutal Iron Gym. And if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. The podcast is for you, so we want to know what you want to learn about. You can tell us at our email at brutalironjim at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening. And thank you for watching.